Brothers and sisters, we welcome everyone here for the services for Bradley Lamond Olson. On behalf of the family, we like to thank you for coming and for all the things that's been done for the family during this past week and times before. We've just had the family prayer offered by Curtis Olson, and we appreciate the accompanying of the prelude music by Becky Benson. We'll now, <clears throat> and we'll have a musical number, Abide With Me, Tis Ease and Tide. It's hymn number 165, and <clears throat> Rebecca Olson will be the chorister, and of course, Becky Benson will be the accompanist. After that, we'll have an opening prayer by Alexander Meekham. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity we have to be together as family and friends and celebrate the life of Brad Olson and to reminisce and share memories of him in his time with us. And we ask you to bless us with thy spirit that we can feel the peace and comfort that comes from thee and that we can be able to enjoy our our memories and our time with brad and we ask you to bless those that are participating in the program that they will feel of thy comfort and 
and peace as well. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The program will go, we will first have a live sketch by Hillary Meekham. Then we'll have a speaker by Susie Olson. There'll then be a musical selection by Maley Gibbs entitled Families Can Be Together Forever and a Child's Prayer. And she will be accompanied by Hillary Meekham, excuse me. Then we'll have memories of grandpa by the grandchildren and we'll go to that point. So Hillary. Bradley Lamont Olson passed away on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023 in Clearfield, Utah at the age of 69 after a long, courageous battle with cancer. Brad was born to Renee Lishman and Douglas Olson in Logan, Utah on August 24th, 1953. He graduated from Skyview High School in 1971. Shortly after graduating, he married Rebecca Kamick in the Logan, Utah Temple. They had five children together, Brian, Jessica, Andrea, Rachel, and Hillary. They were married for 17 years and later divorced. Brad then married Marianne Christiansen, and they were together for over 15 years. He then married Susie T. Nelson. They were recently sealed in the Logan, Utah Temple and celebrated their ninth, just celebrated their ninth wedding anniversary. As a child, Brad enjoyed fishing, working on his grandpa Lishman's farm, taking rides on his bike, and always having some sort of pet. He had fond memories of creating a stamp collection with his mother. Brad had a great love for baseball. In addition to collecting baseball cards, he enjoyed playing baseball both in youth and adult church leagues. Brad's love for baseball never faded, and he didn't miss a day thinking or talking about his favorite team, the LA Dodgers. When a Dodgers game was on, nothing else mattered. Brad was employed by Tri Miller Meatpacking Company and Stuckey Miller Construction, Inc. He then started his own company, B&B Drywall and Acoustical, with his friend, friend Brad Johnson. His business, business was his pride and joy for over 20 years. While he lived in Nevada, he was employed by M&H Building Specialties, Inc. Most recently, he worked in California on multi-million dollar projects with the company Best Interiors, Inc. as senior estimator for drywall and metal studs. Bidding these large projects was his true passion in life. Most work weeks working over 80 hours and running on very little sleep. Brad is preceded in death by his mother, Renee. He is survived by his wife, Susie T. Nelson of Layton, his father, Douglas of Logan, his siblings, Wayne and Joan of Hiram, Dell and Rebecca of Wellsville, Teresa and Zane Bassett of Wellsville. He is also survived by his five children, Brian and Nicole in Florida, Jessica and Logan, Andrea and Bluffdale, Rachel Gibbs in Hiram, and Hillary and Alex Meekham in Lehigh, and his eight great, great, not great, his eight grandchildren, Megan, they are great, <laughs> his eight grandchildren, Megan, Jacob, Addison, Maylee, Caden, Gavin, Vivian, and Kaya. Um, <clears throat> now I just want to take a moment to elaborate on some of his favorite things and just take a quick walk down memory lane. I'm just going to read it because I won't be able to hold it together. So dad had a true love for the outdoors. He loved fishing and hunting with his dad and brothers, doing yard work and just plain getting his hands dirty. In his thirties, he found a love for running. And I remember cheering him on at many marathons. To say dad was an avid coin collector would be a huge understatement. He left behind eight fireproof filing cabinets. He made sure they were fireproof. Um, full of his most treasured finds that he had uh, exchanged at coin expos. Dad loved a good salad bar. <laughs> Boy, did he love a good salad bar. I can still see him walking back from the, to the table with his heaping plate that was literally like a mound, <laughs> just coated in blue cheese dressing. You couldn't even see the salad. Um, due to his past experience as a butcher, he always made sure I knew which cut to order so that I had the most delicious steak. If the TV was on, it was either Dodgers game, Bonanza, which drove me crazy, or a John Wayne Western, even down to the end, when I'd walk into his hospital room or rehab center room without fail, it was either baseball or Western that he would have to turn down to have a conversation. Dad had the most contagious laughs and distinct laugh. 
I would find myself along with anyone in the room, just laughing right alongside him. You could hear him miles away. <laughs> Dad's two favorite things were his grandchildren and his dog, Honey. His grandchildren were the light and joy of his life. The way he would beam when they were around is a smile I'll never forget. There's no doubt that his grandchildren meant the world to him. He always made them feel special and wasn't opposed to getting down on the floor to play with them. Honey was dad's beloved, beloved companion for many years. He loved that dog more than life itself. She made many road trips from California to Utah with him to keep him company in the car. She was treated like royalty and her physique is proof of that. Because I was the youngest and so dang cute, I did get this tiny small amount of extra attention. Um, after the big kids would go to bed, I was allowed to stay up past my bedtime and watch the opening act of the Johnny Carson show with him. I never missed a night of announcing, here's Johnny. And then to bed I went. Saturday mornings in my childhood often started out at 8 a.m. with a stop at Burger King to grab my favorite ham, egg, and cheese croissant sandwich on the way to dad's shop. If I wasn't scrapping houses, I was at the shop cleaning up after the guys, either scrubbing mud buckets or their nasty toilet. <clears throat> I remember sitting in dad's office in his shop as he tried, being the keyword, to help me make sense of my geometry homework by drawing out sketches and relating it to real life. Real life being construction, like I was going to ever use that. To this day, I hate geometry, but at least he tried. <laughs> I have fond memories of calling dad for help on bids at work when I was a playground designer. I definitely did not get his love for bidding and cringed every time one made its way to my desk. After searching the plans for hours, I would give up and call dad to see if by chance he was bidding the same project. I'd say, hey dad, any clue where the playground is on this one? And without missing a beat, he'd say, yep, check E3. More often than not, he, always, he was more helpful than the landscape architect who actually designed the plans. Without fail, he always followed up to see if I'd won the bid or not. On occasion, we won the same job and had fun discussing the progress on the project as it went on. Dad was, <clears throat> Dad was a workaholic and self-taught estimator. He learned on the job and had a natural talent for it. One of the jobs he was most proud of was the LA airport edition. That job caused a lot of headaches and a lot of change orders, but he was proud of winning that job for his company. Dad was highly sought after by many companies and was at the height of his career right before his stroke. Stepping back from work after his stroke in August was the hardest thing he'd ever had he'd had to do. It literally broke his spirit. Dad's life was cut short, but he will be dearly missed by everyone who knew him. We love you, Dad. I just asked Lynn if he wanted to do it for me. He said, no. <laughs> um, Brad and I met in 2006 um, on a dating site. I had a client come over for a massage. I've been a massage therapist for 30 years. And she was 20 years older than me, but just a very young spirit and I was trying to talk her into doing the online dating thing and <clears throat> so after the massage I I says here let me show you so I got on the computer and brought up the site which it had expired but I had some messages so I had to re-sign up to get the messages and lo and behold there was Brad um, so I wrote back to him and the rest is history. Brad loved going to the movies. Whoever had the best popcorn, that's where we ended up. He loved watching old time shows like Andy Griffith, Gunsmoke, Wagon Train, and all the ones that Hillary mentioned and the cowboy shows. 
Dodgers. Boy, that was just his life. We had a special channel, Spectrum. Like we have Dish here, we have Spectrum there, and they showed every game that the Dodgers played. And I learned all of the players' names, and he taught me everything about baseball, and and I really came to love Dodgers almost as much as him. Um, he ran four marathons, and I uh, put them his ribbons in a in a case, and uh, I forgot to bring them, Bonnie. <laughs> Um, almost two years ago, I totaled his new car. It wasn't my fault. I was on the express, well, I was on the far left lane and a car came out of the express lane. There was a truck in front of me and this car just went right in front of the truck and the truck slammed on its brakes and I slammed into the truck. <clears throat> and I called Brad and told him what had happened. And the first thing that he said was, are you okay? I don't think I would have said that if someone ruined my brand new car, but. <laughs> That's the way he was. Brad was known for being a workaholic. His boss, Dennis Ayers, um, would tell him not to work the weekends, which went in one ear and out the other. I bought some earplugs to try to stick them in one ear so that it would stay in there, but Nothing would work. The one word I always used for explaining Brad was kind. He was so very kind. I loved his laugh and his blue eyes. I love you, Brad. I have a, a letter, short letter from his boss in California, and I want to <clears throat> get rid of these tears so I can see. <laughs> <clears throat> Brad Olson began working for Best Interiors in January 2016. In our original interview with Brad, he mentioned that he really enjoyed estimating. He also stated that he was a workaholic. In my many years in this business, I have heard this comment a few times, and it's usually just talk, but not for Brad. He was definitely a workaholic. There were countless times when many of us had to get after him to stop working and for him to take the time off that was necessary to revive and to restore his energy. This turned out to be a difficult and an almost impossible task. It became even more so when COVID hit and he began working from home. When Susie wasn't at the house, there were only two things he enjoyed. That was estimating and watching baseball. More importantly than his hard work, he was a man of integrity. He had a very unique command and expertise of his estimating skills. He was extremely focused and immersed in his profession, giving his best at all times. He tried to treat everyone fairly without fear or favor and he always spoke his mind, whether you were ready for it or not. If you wanted his opinion, good or bad, Brad would always let you know what it was, he what he was thinking. 
This trait I personally appreciated because it was refreshing having someone explain exactly how he was viewing the situation and issues being discussed. Brad was tough and was a fighter. He fought the disease as long and as hard as he could. And he believed he would be able to beat it once again. That was Brad, always holding firm and always looking to the future in anticipation and always expecting the best possible outcome. <laughs> Brad was a big part of our best interiors family. And he will definitely be missed by all of us who worked with him. We will keep Brad and his family in our prayers. And may God bless him always, Dennis and Donna Ayers. So Through heavenly Father's plan, I always want to be with my own family. Heavenly Father, you can see that Something that Jesus told us. To me.
Hey, I'm going to read Addie's. <laughs> it says, Grandpa got the name Arch Grandpa when I was a little girl. When I was six months old, we moved to California, and Grandpa lived only an hour and a half away. The first time he came to visit, he brought me a bag of cutie oranges. I love them so much, so much that he started bringing me oranges every time he would come to visit. For over 12 years, every time we would see him, he always came with a bag of oranges and other treats for us. I will miss Orange Grandpa. I always remember whenever Grandpa came, he gave us a big bag full of oranges and treats, so we started to call him Orange Grandpa. He was goofy and joked around with us and made us laugh. One of my favorite memories was at Christmas when he gave me a mermaid swimsuit. He wore the top part of it, which I thought was funny. Grandpa was always nice to us and always gave us hugs. And whenever he texted us, he said he loves us with lots of colorful hearts at the end. Grandpa would always be so generous and give us money for our birthdays. It was always fun to pick out toys at the store that we, that we wanted. We always took a picture and sent it to him. He always loved seeing it. I really took, he really just took you into his family. He was the coolest grandpa with nine toes. I'll miss you, grandpa. Okay, we're getting shy today. This is Gavin. He says, my favorite day with him was the day that we went to SeaWorld because we got to see the orca show with him and grandpa and us all got sucked by the sucker fish. <laughs> Having a hard time. Grandpa was funny. He always teased me and made funny faces. I like that he gave us tangerines for Christmas. I love Grandpa's dog, Honey, and I used to tease Grandpa and call her Blackie and Whitey. And amongst many other names, every time she'd see him, she'd call him a different name. She says, I love you, Grandpa. <clears throat> um, love Grandpa Brad. Um, Grandpa Brad, he was, he had like the, I always like to say he was, he was in the body of a grandpa, but he had the soul of a five-year-old. He was he was the happiest guy like probably ever met. My favorite memory was probably at their house in California. <clears throat> um, you know, we play in the pool, and then this is also Max's favorite memory too. Uh, Brad would come and or our dad would come and say, "Come on, it's time to go to bed. Come inside." And Brad would be like, "No, let him keep playing." He, I don't know, he didn't, he didn't have a care in the world besides oranges and baseball. And every time we were over there, always watching baseball. And never really got into baseball, but the only reason why I know so much about it is because of Brad, especially about the Dodgers. And, and then Lucy and Max are shy, so I'll share Lucy's too. Um, Lucy said her favorite memory of Brad was um, at their house with the orange trees. He'd always have oranges on the table and she said they were so sweet and he'd always swing around in her little Elsa dress. So yeah, we love you, Brad. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a touching of what your grandkids can say and remember about you. <clears throat> I'm grateful for this opportunity that a uh, family gave me to uh, conduct these services and just kind of share a few remarks. I've thought a lot this week uh, since I was asked of different things. Of the times that I've spent with Brad, I think of the times that we laughed together. I think of the times that uh, we cried together. 
I think of the times when I had the opportunity to lay my hands upon his head and give you give him a blessing. At times, uh, he was a special friend to me, and uh, I wish I'd reciprocated more the last little while. But I love Brad Olson. So I thought about what I wanted to say today. My thoughts kept going back to his particular scriptures. And uh, I don't know how many times it's come. And so even this morning, I was, uh, it just hit me again. And so I, I decided to grab my Book of Mormon and to share this scripture. It talks about charity. And charity suffereth long and is kind and envieth not. It's not puffed up, nor seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, and rejoiceth not in the iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth. But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever, and who is found possessed of it at the last day shall be well with them. A couple months ago when Susie and Brad were sealed in the temple, as I sit there and look at Brad, Susie, and my thoughts flooded back over the years that I've known Brad. He wasn't a perfect man. None of us are. We make mistakes, we have trials, and it's how we deal with them and what we deal with them and how we deal with them helps us to become the person that our Heavenly Father wants us to be. As I looked at Brad and seen him dressed in the robes of the priesthood, I knew that he had <clears throat> taken advantage of the atonement of Jesus Christ, and he was worthy to enter back into the presence of his heavenly father and be with them forever. That's what this life is all about. And I know that my friend Brad has taken care of everything he needed to and is worthy to be there in his presence. I know that without a doubt. I love you, Brad. And I know that he loved me. And how important that is in our lives, that we just love one another unconditionally. No strings attached is what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. I want to leave you my testimony. I know that God lived and that Jesus is the Christ. I know he's my savior, my redeemer. And I know that the gospel has been restored on earth by a prophet of God. That the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that restored gospel. 
And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now have a, first of all, um, we'd like to invite <clears throat> the ushers once the funeral is over, the pallbearers, if you would just go out this door and line up there ready for, to help in that process. The pallbearers are Alexander Meekham, Zane Bassett, Mark Davis, Josh Barnett, Connor Barnett, Mark Barlow, and Curtis Olson. The honorary pallbearers are Doug Olson, Wayne Olson, Dell Olson, Brian Olson, Jacob Olson, Caden Meekham, and Gavin Meekham. The closing hymn will be hymn number 100. Near my God to thee, after which the closing prayer will be offered by Brother Mark Davis. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful this day for the opportunity that we've had to be here, to reflect, to remember, and to get to know a little better our dear friend and grandpa and father, Brad Olson. We love him. So grateful for him in our lives. Grateful for what a wonderful friend he was to all of us. Father, at this time, we ask a special blessing to be upon his family and those who loved him and who mourn at this time. We pray thy comforting spirit to be with them. We pray at this time that 
we will always be able to hold a part of him in our hearts as we move forward in our lives. Again, we're grateful for this opportunity and pray thy blessings upon all of us this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.